Hello Kingdom citizens, Denzel Rodriguez here, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. As you know, on this channel, we cover the velocity banking concept, infinite banking, and kingdom authority. Today though, I have a special guest with me, Phil, that is works very deeply with IBC Global, infinite banking. So we're gonna be talking a little bit on infinite banking, but we're gonna be taking an inside look behind the scenes uh from phil's perspective working at ibc global for a few uh quite some time now a few years in the books and just getting his insight where where does he fit into this whole picture and i think this will really help you all the viewers the prospects the even the existing clients and those that are looking to become clients at ibc global to really see the entire process of how IBC Global is so successful with designing uh, high cash value life insurance policies and also the long term relationship. What does that look like in terms of ongoing strategies? Because as you know, it's one thing to learn the infinite banking concept. My goodness, is that a journey alone, right? But then it's actually having the policy in place and then using it to either make investments, pay off debt, leverage, create arbitrage, tax-free income, so many different strategies that we can all implement. So being able to understand that whole entire layout, I think will help you make the decision in terms of which particular agent you want to work with and the, the agency that they're tied to. So with that being said, Phil, let me bring you on the screen. How you doing? How's everything going Good. with you today? Everything's been good so far. A little rainy, cooler here. I know you're in Florida, so I'm sure you're enjoying hot. some bright shines. So, oh yeah, okay, it's so hot, yeah. but here it's in the 40s. It's raining. Wish I was closer to you right now, but overall, day's been pretty good so far. How about you? Good. I mean, the the I worked out this morning with my girlfriend. Uh, so the the sun wasn't quite up yet when we went in, but when we came out, it blinded me. It was so hot um, <laughs> coming out of the gym. So um, I'm. I'm sheltered in nice AC right now in, in the studio. Nice. So the day is going solid. I've got a ton of energy and I'm, I'm really happy that we're doing this together because I, it's, we're taking a totally different angle. We're not necessarily trying to sell life insurance today or high cash value or infinite banking, but rather we're taking an inside look at the process. I think, like I said, I think this is going to really benefit existing customers, new customers, and then those that are looking to make a decision they're trying to qualify uh, uh ibc global to see whether or not they want to work with us or not they're looking at some other competitors and i think a video like this is su super helpful so where i would like to start is tell us a little bit about you phil what were you doing uh, uh your your career your background prior to coming across infinite banking and then tell us about your your role uh in the beginning when you first came across IBC Global, Steve Parisi, the, the team, and then take us to 2021 today, where you currently sit and, and how you've been operating. So in that order. Sure, sure. yeah, to begin, uh, prior to working with IBC Global, I was still working in insurance. I was doing a lot of home and auto insurance, more personal lines overall, um, but I was working in life insurance as well, more term insurance, universal life. Uh, so definitely different than what Steve is doing here. And funny enough, even when I was leaving my old job to, to start working with, with Steve, um, my old boss who was in the business for 30 plus years mentioned what Steve was talking about in his mind didn't seem possible. He said, I've been in this industry for a long time, um, using policies for high cash value, whole life insurance. It doesn't sound realistic. doesn't sound real. Be, be careful. You're not joining a scam or uh, they're not really taking advantage of you. So that honestly put me on high alert. But um, soon after, once I, I met with Steve, he explained exactly what was going on. I uh, saw his excitement, saw his passion for the business. It was pretty easy to join the business overall. Um, at that time, when I did join IBC Global, it was, I believe, only 10 employees at that at that moment. I was myself, Seth Transu, as the agent. Steve was still working with a lot of different clients. Uh, he was still very active with the with clients overall, but of course now he's very busy. So he's kind of taking a step back more doing the, the educational videos and the marketing side of things. But um, I think we're, we're now at around 40 employees. So within a three year period, that is a, a lot of growth overall. Um, at that time, we, we only had a case design department, had 
um, a little bit, bit of customer relations sales, like mentioned, whereas now we have around 10 agents in sales. We have a customer relations department. We have a case design department. Uh, we have an, a case management department. So we've grown a lot and we deal with a lot of people, which is great, but we're always growing. We're always looking to, to keep growing. And it's, it's a very exciting time at IBC Global. Uh, I've lost track a little bit as to other aspects maybe you wanted me to touch on. Yeah, like, uh, so you you originally came from uh, already in the industry, right? You were selling Perfect. full life term, universal, a wide range of, of products. And when you, how did you initially find Steve? Was it on the internet or did mm -hmm. you actually meet him in person or hear about him in the industry? Sure. Rumors, like, or how did that start? Sure. So I actually met him through a friend. Um, he, him and myself, we both live in the same area. I'm about 30 minutes away from where he lives, the office overall. Um, we're both very religious. We're Jehovah's Witnesses. So that's where we met in the past, ran into each other, knew each other through friends and different activities overall. But um, a friend mentioned, and actually Steph Transfer, who works there, mentioned that they were looking for agents um, and mentioned exactly what they did. Again, was a little skeptical at first. Even my old boss mentioned uh, just to be careful but overall once i met with steve it, it was pretty easy to jump on board got it and this was in 2018 or 2019 18. i believe it was okay. the years go so quickly but yeah. <laughs> i think um late 2018 is where i met with steve and early 2019 is when i officially joined ivy school yeah and and honestly i think you really took off because I originally found Steve in early 2018, late 2017 and was doing my research. And then I finally came on board around like early summer of 2018. So we, we pretty much got acquainted pretty early on, but we didn't actually communicate with each other until I, I want to say like well into 2019, because that's when you actually came down to South Florida, right? That was in 2019, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, this was pre-pandemic, yeah. right? <laughs> Pre-COVID. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Pre-COVID, came down for the Cardone sales training overall, just how to grow our business, how to um, be better salesmen overall, overall. So that was an exciting time. And before I met you, it was kind of a, a mystery. It was this Denzel Rodriguez, it was Velocity Banking. We would, <laughs> we would get some people interested and um, always heard about you, but like you mentioned, we never really spoke or if we did, it was very brief. So it was nice to be able to meet you in person. We, we got dinner together and uh, it, was, it was a great time overall. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think that was really, really cool. And so now from that short period of time, do you credit like your previous experience with, with insurance and sales? Like what made you want to really like rise to the top and be one of you know, Steve's top agents, because I think that's how he, he speaks of you, or that's how I view you, honestly, with all the uh, clients I've referred to IBC Global, which what's really happening. It's not like Steve's doing all the policies. At one point, I think he was back way, way early on. He was definitely designing and doing the marketing. He was doing a lot at, at the time. But now that he's, like you said, took a step back and is really allowing other people to be really successful in, in the company. What were some things that you transitioned or pivoted from the previous boss to working with Steve? Like that really, you know, right. rise to the top. What was that like? Yeah, I, I would say uh, one of the main things is just Steve overall. He himself is a great, you know, great um, salesman or just not even a salesman. I, I think for myself, I don't really like to, to even refer myself as of course, I'm in sales, but just being able to provide the information, not really put too much pressure on on people. It's more just trying to decide if it works for them, because if it doesn't make sense, then we, we don't. We want to make sure we're comfortable. We want to make sure they're comfortable overall. Um, but it really is just how Steve approached the whole business. He really uh, helped myself and taught me that as well as Steph Transu. She is who helped me come to IBC Global as well as train me overall when it came to sales. So I, I definitely I uh, think they get a lot of credit for for the help where I am. And Steve has an approach, especially initially, where he pretty much just throws you in the fire, gives you leads and says, hey, give some people calls. That's how you're going to learn. So um, at first, it's definitely a little, little scary, but it definitely helps you learn very quickly, as well as helps you to just be, be more refined overall in the whole sales process. So 
Um, definitely a lot of credit to just IBC Global in itself. And it, it definitely helped that I was in the industry beforehand for, I think, around five years beforehand. So um, some experience coming in that that helps, I think, it's a lot tougher. We've brought in a lot of agents who maybe have no office experience. So um, just as simple as you know, sending out emails, how to talk to people in a professional manner. Um, it helps when you already have that, but we, we have been able to train people successfully. And as long as you're looking to learn, then uh, we've been able to bring people on with no issue. Really cool. So leadership is my takeaway from that. Like Steve's leadership is really what uh, uh, really motivated you to want to do well in the company. And so now to today, what are some of your main roles working with Steve behind the scenes, like on a day to day? What are some of the things that you you see with clients um, and just kind of walk us through uh, a, a day in the life of at IBC Global? Because you're at the location Monday through Friday. Sure. Yeah. Like you mentioned earlier, Steve was doing everything. You know, even when I joined the team, uh, he was doing a lot of sales, talking to most of the clients. We would pretty much set up appointments to talk with Steve specifically until we really were able to handle ourselves. Um, at this point, Steve is has a hands-off approach where it's just the sales agents for the most part that are dealing with clients. Steve still helps out here and there, but for the most part, uh, we're running our own meetings, meeting with clients over Zoom or Google Meet, um, as well as doing those initial calls. Like you mentioned earlier, there are people who just reach out to us, whether um, through yourself or through our site, whycashvaluelife.com, our YouTube channel. There's a lot of different areas, different uh, aspects of where leads come from. But initially, they'll reach out to us. We will be um, informed that we have this person that is interested. So we'll do a five day process. It, it could be a lot where we call, email, text them initially if they don't respond. And we pretty much do that for five days. We're calling, we're, we're leaving messages. Uh, doing selfie videos we're, we're trying to be a little creative just get people's attention see if we get their inf get them information or help them with whatever questions they may have once we do get them on the phone typically it's it's trying to answer anything they, they might have questions on it of course uh, getting some numbers in their hands to make sure it does make sense uh, in their eyes uh, the nice thing is as the years have gone on the more i would say uh, knowledgeable people are whether through your channel or through uh, people reaching out through youtube a lot of people come in pretty much ready knowing exactly what they want or just needing need help with some basic questions overall and once they see, see the numbers they want to move forward um so that that is a nice aspect of things but also at this point even beyond sales i'm helping other agents training them uh, helping them um, really learn the business and how to deal with clients help them with the software overall. So training other people is definitely a new aspect um, that I've taken on recently, which is nice and something new and really keeps things interesting. Nice. So in addition to you um, doing most of the sales process, the contacting, the follow up, the presentation of Infinite Banking, Cash Value Life Insurance, you're also um, building up other agents as well within the company. Correct. Yeah, probably a year and a half ago, I started training a couple of agents and um, I enjoyed it. It's it's definitely something that is fun seeing people come in who same thing exactly like I came in, really not knowing too much about the infinite banking concept or high cash value side of things. But right. again, we, we, we test them quite a bit, especially initially, just make sure to get them on the phones, help them get more refined. So even with the first six months, you really see a lot of growth from, from people. And um, it's definitely satisfying to see you know, people picking it up, these agents picking it up, helping other people out. And um, yeah, Steve, of course, you know, with his videos and his eyelash training helps a ton as well. So um, I, I like it. It's, a, it's definitely a new aspect, like you mentioned. Yeah, let, let's touch on that a little bit for the insurance agents that are that are watching or the aspiring agents or those that are looking to add a, a second stream of income to their uh, to their life here, because I have quite a few clients and also subscribers, viewers that are pre-existing, they have their license, maybe they were selling term or they were doing uh, UL, Universal Life, or they were doing whole life, but not for infinite banking and they're looking to engage with it. What is, if, if, some, if there's an agent out there watching and they're like, you know what, after watching Phil's video with Denzel, after checking IBC Global and Denzel's channel, other videos, I'd love to be a part of that company. What is the process to, you know, get started with that? Are, are there 
different ways um, because I know for, for me personally as a financial consultant, coach, content creator, I, I think I have a very unique relationship with IBC Global, which is you know not the traditional or the the set route that I think has been placed because you know I I came into the company very very early on in its beginning early stages so now that there's nice structure there's a whole training academy for insurance agents now there's coaching there's private live streams there's Q and A's there's all the content everything built out whole course walk us through that process just for the agents that are currently watching right now. Sure. Yeah, there, there's a, a lot now um, versus and that pretty much started about a year and a half ago, year ago, this whole ILS training platform. Um, there's a lot of videos, a lot of content that Steve created on the basics of the infinite banking concept, uh, really designing a high cash value whole life insurance. And what's nice is the ILS training takes you from pretty much A to Z, um, dealing with clients from the initial contact, how to follow up with them. Um, a lot of, I think, of those aspects when it comes to follow-up. Steve definitely um, learned a lot from Cardone, uh, Grant Cardone. I, I know you, you like Grant Cardone, like mentioned earlier, oh, we, we did some, yeah, a lot of a lot of Cardone, Cardone content out there. Um, so a lot of it has to do with how to not just design these policies, why we design the policies um, the way that we do or what companies we work with, but overall how to work with someone from A to Z, getting them from the start to the end, on how to write these policies and, and how to be successful in the insurance industry. And like you mentioned, um, it's not just these videos, this platform that we have, but Steve actually does Q and A sessions. Uh, he will do personal coaching with you and he's accessible, of course. So um, a lot of helpful resources for you to be successful, not just in the insurance industry in itself, but especially focusing on the high cash value side of things. and. I feel like it's definitely become more mainstream where people, instead of just getting a traditional whole life policy, people are becoming more interested, hearing more about the infinite banking concept, hearing more about the high cash rate side of things. So there's definitely a lot of interest out there for people. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. And uh, for the very few agents that are watching this or will catch you know the video at some point in time, I think that is a really good place to start. And you know, to clarify even further, there's a, a place, a tab right on the website, uh, IBC Global Inc. or Y Cash Value Life, correct? Where, correct. you know, you can contact, uh, inquire about, you know, developing some kind of partnership um, as an insurance agent, as an independent agent. Uh, there's, is there two options as an independent? And then if you're someone that actually wants to work in-house, is there mm -hmm. both options available? So I believe the option right now is you would be able to, of course, use the ILS training and, and use it for um, your own business overall. Uh, when it comes to in-house, to be honest, I'm not 100% clear on that. That's something that you know we can more of a acquire. qualification process. I'm assuming. That yeah. Point, right? yeah, got it. Yeah, and got um, it. of course, COVID changed a lot. So uh, when it comes to you know we're working from home for the most part, um, I think we have a. a a lot of people who live nearby the office and can go to the office if needed, um, but we are hiring people maybe a little further out. So uh, opportunity possibly for in-house, but I would say for the most part, the ILS training is more for people working out of house and um, just more using our resources and, and how to be successful in your own business, your own leads overall. Got it. Working remote, even in other states. Got it. Awesome. So let's... I'm going to turn the attention to the board here and I, I want to talk about the team. Now, you, you touched on it a little bit. As of 2021, there's now roughly 40 people total, right? Correct. And you've, we got 10 insurance agents um, and some that I've interacted with off the top of my head just through email. I know there's uh, Stephanie, Samantha, you, yourself, uh, Brandon. Um, these are people I constantly mention on the on my channel, but um, kind of go through the different departments. Um, so we know there's 10 different insurance agents. Then there's the, uh, what is it? The case management department, right? The, the people that are actually correct. designing the policy, correct? So the case design department, where they're actually designing the policies. And at this point, I believe we have around four or five people. Um, you may have had some interaction with Joy. She is yes. the one who's been there the longest. Um, she's the one that 
manages that department and she she really trains everyone uh, in that department and has a lot of experience at this point. I think she is one of the um, one of the employees that have been here the longest compared to to everyone else. So she has a lot of experience, worked with Steve directly on design the policies. Um, she's the one who really approves things overall and, and Steve as well makes sure to approve designs. But yes, Joy is amazing when it comes to designing policies and the whole team overall. We have Monica as well. We have a, a, a lot of great uh, employees who are working in that department. Got it. So when a, when a client, and this will tie into the process, I'm going to write it out. So the client initially speaks with an insurance agent, a licensed insurance agent. That's really the first point of contact, correct? Correct. And then after maybe one or two consultations, meetings through Zoom, possibly in person in the future, um, but mostly over Zoom or over the phone, you're presenting something like that, like a whiteboard almost, right? But on the computer and you're kind of answering all the questions and you're getting the age, health, finances of the client to, you know, come up with a funding amount that they want to, you know, put into the policy for a period of time. Once they go through that, then the second part is you submit the numbers to the case designer, correct? Correct. Got it. And then from, from there, um, who else is in the process that because I there's so many people that touch just one policy that makes it so great you know these these high cash value life insurance policies I think it's really cool sure. for the viewers that are watching to see how many people behind the scenes other than your agent um, is is involved in the process so we've got the case designer the agent who else is in the picture sure so once we get those or once we request those numbers from case design that is where of course we present it to the client and if the client says i want to move forward that's where case management gets involved and that's another uh four or five different employees there where um they're the ones who are very hands-on when it comes to getting the questionnaire making sure to fill out the application making sure everything is accurate to make sure we can start the underwriting process with the company directly whether guardian mass mutual other companies were brokered with overall, but they're they're very involved when it comes to that side of things. We, of course, will re relay some information to the client when they are going through that process, but um, they're, the case management department is the one who's directly talking to their underwriters, making sure that the process is going smoothly. Got it. And then after case management, who else is in the, in the picture here? Sure. So once they get approved that's where um, we might write the policy itself and that's where customer relations gets involved customer re relations their main uh, department or job in the department is helping with clients that already have policies with us and helping uh, clients with loans helping them with payments um, just making sure that their policy is going smoothly as well as helping with any uh, different things that need to be edited with the policy down the line uh, and that will be another four to five employees. I feel like I might be missing people, but we can just pretty much round the numbers around there. Yeah, estimated four to five is, and what, what was that department? Uh, relations? Sure, it's customer relations. Customer relations, got it. At this point, the policy's in place. Correct. Got it. And then any other uh, uh, departments that are um, on the back end, not necessarily involved in the in the policies or, or the the case, the situation itself, but any other departments on the back end that help this system run well. Sure. So there are people who um, work with case designers to really spreadsheet the numbers themselves. Of course, you, we also have uh, Tina who takes all the calls into IBC Global. She's great. A lot of people may have had uh, interactions with her. Uh, we also have um, Dara, who Dara Parisi, uh, you I believe met her before, or yeah, we met in in, right. in uh, Florida together. So um, she's a big help in just organizing everything. I mean, she has her hand in so many different things. Um, so she she's great, especially at organizing as well as Jen. Um, um, the actual names of of uh, their titles are slipping my mind, but there's about you know another five or so people that you can add who just make sure that the whole business is running smoothly, whether with HR, 
um, or just having the supplies necessary to make sure that we can really do the best we can on our end. Um, and then of course, in the background with Steve, uh, with his uh, videos that he does a lot of content, we have the media um, department, which is another three to four employees who are helping make sure that we are getting all the content necessary, necessary rather through YouTube, uh, through Instagram, through uh, LinkedIn. We have a, a lot of different avenues there. We're just making sure that our website is working correctly. So, right, the media, the media team, and the education uh, really helps the insurance agents' conversations go a lot smoother, where it doesn't feel like a sales pitch, rather an educational consultation meeting to help clarify. Oh. Um, you know, the client says, Hey, I saw Steve said this, but now he's saying this because of new mech laws. Just want to get some clarification on the guarantees, what's going on like that, right? That's what that department is yeah. really yeah. set out to do and really help you guys where the leads, um, that really helps with time management wise. You don't have to spend so much time trying to get new leads. Rather it's, it's flowing right to you guys. Correct. Absolutely. Especially when I first started, Steve was pretty much just starting his YouTube channel. Whereas now we have hundreds of videos where we can pretty much uh, any question that a client brings out, we can send a video of their way where we can maybe do a brief explanation, especially over email, send the video and that answers the, their question or any concern they have. So those videos and, and that media department is, is huge. And like mentioned earlier, Steve is doing a lot of media and focusing more on, on that side of things. So um that's where he's of course keeping busy making sure there's a video every day that is being put onto our youtube channel yeah insane his uh output of content yeah. I, I i love it every day he's, he's putting content out it's insane so media uh team three to four and uh i think you touched on a, a little bit of the technical where you've got the excels and the spreadsheets so is that like a like the it team or is that a different department so that's that is still the um you can kind of, I guess, include it with, with cases on or just the spreadsheet department where there's a couple of people we have there. Um, of course, we do have IT, like you just mentioned, where we have about three people that are working in IT, just making sure that everything is running smoothly, especially with the website, with uh, different leads that are coming in, monitoring everything that, make, making sure that everything is, is going well. Yeah. Um, and, and they've been a huge key because we are, of course, growing a lot. We're changing a lot of different systems, a lot of processes. So they've been a, a big help on that. Um, and even included with the agents, you can include um, William, who is pretty much the agent supervisor, making sure that uh, we're working successfully and making sure that we're productive. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to think, I feel like I'm, I'm missing some people. The commissions department, which is another three people Got who it. just make sure that, of course, Everyone is getting paid, whether agents and just employees overall, the payroll department and a lot of credit to them because they, they've shown us that they've done some examples for everyone just to show exactly how they're able to um, disperse all the payments. They, they just get pages and pages of uh, commission statements on a monthly basis. So there is a lot of information they have to pretty much dig through just to make sure everything is accurate and they do an amazing job. Right, so Williams supervisor over the agents, making sure you guys have the right tools, that you're fully equipped to deliver the best service. Um, commission department, making sure you guys get paid so that you're rewarded properly for your worth and your value. So you keep delivering that great value to the to the client. Tech department, making sure is everything is working. <laughs> uh, that is yeah. important. And uh, and then at the at the very top of it all, um, I'm assuming you got the executive, you know, like the C suite or or the, the the top people that oversee everything that's steve right and and dara correct or is there anyone else correct in that? no so I, I mean we we have a lot of different su supervisors in each department got it so we have, yeah we have you know case management we have a supervisor case design customer relations media just about every department has some kind of supervisor and we're, we're constantly meeting just about every week as well just to make sure that um, everything is running smoothly. If there are issues, how can we fix them? How can we improve just in our business overall? And like mentioned, I mean, when I started less than about three years ago now, I mean, we had 10 employees. So adding 30 employees, 10 employees pretty much year by year, um, if not more, that's, it's a lot. There's a lot going oh, on. Yeah. So it's making sure that everything is going smoothly. 
Whereas before, maybe if there was an issue, I can just walk up right to Steve and say, hey, this is a problem. How do we fix it? Whereas now there's so many people and we want to make sure that everything's being addressed properly. Yeah. And would you say it's, it's um, a lot easier than just going to Steve for everything in the beginning versus now it's like it, it, Steve's spread out. His, he's moved his brain into these different departments yeah. of how he you know, likes the, the system. Would you say that's much uh, more smoother? Was it harder at first or is it just like very, very clean now? Sure. So take Steve, all the guessing work out of it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So Steve, I mean, he was busy beforehand when he was dealing with clients and now he's just as busy. But of course, his his attention is focused in different directions. Um, but what's nice is we do have that ILS training, for example, for agents, where if we do have very specific questions that a client brings out, that maybe a video isn't on YouTube, we can go there directly answer any questions regarding high cash value life insurance or just the processes overall. Um, the YouTube channel, there's so much information there where, again, we don't have to go directly to Steve to ask him. We can find that information ourselves. Or even at this point, myself and Stephanie, we're senior agents, we're, we're training other agents, just making sure that everything is, is running smoothly. If they have any questions, they can come to us. So just in the sales department itself, so many resources to just to make sure that we are doing everything properly and answering any questions that clients have and that goes for all departments we have so much video content out there uh if they have any issues or or need help with anything uh, a lot of supervisors again it's just a, a well-oiled machine just every department at this point knows their the role what their job is and and how to really accomplish it Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I think a lot of the viewers are going to be like really excited just to kind of see how does the whole machine really operate. Uh, and I think people are going to get a, a, a bigger appreciation in regards to the the process when we're putting a policy in place. I, I, I'm sure you'd agree it's it's quite lengthy, could be four to six weeks, sometimes as long as eight weeks, sometimes even yeah. longer than that. I mean, even during the height of the pandemic and even now you know we, we still see delays that are kind of out of our control um and so now that the viewer gets to see like in addition to things that are outside of our control here is the things that we can control and what you guys are doing to constantly you know improve uh beings that you've got a, a much larger team now compared to 2018 2019 versus in 2021 rocking with a solid team of roughly 40 people and I'm on that team as well, you know, uh, and, and I'm, and I'm looking to add more ways that I can provide support to the insurance agents, making your lives way easier by providing you not only, um, just leads, random leads, but actually qualified people that have watched a ton of content that not only have they watched content, but they also maybe have done work with me one-to-one. -one on the financial coaching side or consulting side where they've, they, they know their numbers very well. They've paid off a ton of debt. So they've got more capital, more cash coming to you guys. And I think that really makes your job a lot easier. You're able to perform better. And again, it's, it's less of a sales conversation. Rather it's an educational experience that benefits the, the customer to improve their financial well-being, create that generational wealth that they're uh, seeking to achieve, which is, uh, uh, I love being a part of that side. And in regards to the process, just to kind of repeat when, when a client initially comes in prospect, they first touches the agent after a couple conversations, one or two, maybe more, then it goes to the case designer department where they create that actual policy according to the numbers that the client and the agent ag agreed on comes back to the agent you set up a, a follow-up call meeting to go over the numbers and make sure everything is good they fully understand once they say yes boom it then goes into that underwriting that that four to six week window right sometimes yeah. longer what, what are you guys saying four to six weeks are you saying six to eight weeks what what is the sure that in so it, right here yeah and i hate to be vague because it could really be anywhere from three to eight weeks I'll, I'll typically tell people four to eight weeks um of course if it's sooner great but we try to temper expectations because there are so many different layers and like you mentioned earlier because of covid 
there have been longer delays on just getting medical records uh, for them to be able to verify everything. And they've even been busier than ever because of COVID. More people are interested in life insurance and uh, they've been flooded with a lot of new business. So they're, whether Mass Mutual Guardian or any other company we're brokered with, they're, they're as well trying to catch up and, and get as much information um, necessary to make a decision on underwriting. Um, so it, it is going to be that four to eight weeks where you should expect, especially if you have to do a medical medical records from your primary doctor, if there are complications, you know, they now have to go to a specialist. There are so many different variables that can push, that can push the process back um, and, and really just cause it to be on the longer side. Got it, got it. And so once that's complete, client looks at the the final uh policy contract they review mm -hmm. it you review it with the with the client and then they they pay for it policies in force once that occurs that now they'll have uh an, an extending relationship with the uh relation department customer relations department but also Correct. you the agent as well is there a um a set standard as to how many times you communicate with the client Per, per year um, or is it kind of like as needed? Sure, so we do, of course, throughout the year, if you have any questions, you need help with any situation, uh, myself, the client relations team, uh, whether it's with loans or payments or any issues overall with IT, we can help you with. Um, but we make sure that we do two review meetings a year. We'll reach out to you, send an email just to let you know how your policy looks overall, show you the numbers. Um, and we like to meet at least once a year, we will reach out twice a year. It's really up to you as to how often you want to meet or how you want to talk. So uh, we're making sure that we're keeping that relationship. I know it's pretty much standard in this industry that people or agents write a policy and then they disappear all of a sudden. So uh -huh. we want to make sure to do the opposite. We're always taking care of the client and all their needs throughout the year. This is a really lifetime relationship that we have here, making sure everything is running smoothly with the policy. Got it. Got it. So. One to two is like the standard, but if the client needs another session, they're they're not locked out. They're, they don't have to pay for anything in additional. They're they're locked in as long as they keep their policy in force. Absolutely. We're always accessible as agents and Steve will, will help out here in there as well. Cool. And in addition to that, when someone initially funds their policy and they they have it in force, they create their account, there's also they also get access to a course, right? And this is relatively new. Um I, I think this has been enforced now for maybe two years. Could be wrong. Yeah, it's it's been around that time where we also send over some some videos that aren't on our YouTube channel necessarily, going over how to really successfully use your policy, as well as how to you know simple tasks like funding your policy, how to request a loan, whether we're guarding or mass mutual. Um, but overall, just a little more information, just helping to make sure everything is running smoothly with your policy, and um, just a little additional information on the infinite banking concept and, and different situations you can use your policy awesome and and your your opinion on the 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 course itself because i um have access to it i found it to be very very helpful because i've had tons of um conversations with uh exist existing clients that are like hey how do i do a loan and for the longest i would always just say call ibc global and they'll help you out with that but now they, I mean, they can still do that, but they also have access to this course layout step by step with each insurance company on how to properly do that. So they don't make a, a, a mistake on how they take out a, a loan bar against the cash value. Correct. Here, yeah. There's a lot of, yeah. There's a lot of good information on there where, um, of course, like you mentioned, you start the policy, you're excited, but then there's an, a, I guess a, a moment we were like, okay, now what? Right. So um, that course really helps people figure out how to fund the policy, how to take out loans, because it can be overwhelming when starting a policy. So it, it's making sure get that getting that basic information there, um, but also again how to really use your policy overall. And of course, you're available to really help people with that next step on where to allocate those funds, how to use those funds, when it makes sure to or makes sense to take out a loan. So. Um, a lot of different variables there, but we, we appreciate your side of things as well, because that's your expertise, especially when it comes to, um, you know, whether you're using for debt or different purchases overall, you, you have a lot of knowledge on, on that side of things. Yeah, I, I like to, you know, I've taken a step back as well, where in the beginning, 
I was very heavily involved on helping the client put policies in place on the design side and actually presenting the, the concept to now I've taken a step back where I've been focusing more on policy use, the actual strategy and, and I, I'm positioning myself to become a strategist around infinite banking. Okay, once you have the policy in place, let's let's have conversations, let's create content, you know, because there's not too much out there. There's a there's a lot of content on how infinite banking should look, how cash value life insurance policy should be designed, the dividends, the returns, the loan interest, how loan interest works, how to offset interest and, and all that, but very, very little content on actual policy use. And that's where I felt like I could be a great uh, addition onto the team in that department. And that's where, you know, in addition for those that are listening, when you do get a policy in place through IBC Global and you use my name as a referral, if that's how you originally actually came across IBC Global through my channel originally, let's say that was the case, or this is your very first video and you're now just hearing about IBC Global and Phil and Steve and all the, the entire team and how they work, when you use my name, uh, you also receive, I, I try to give people like a, a gift where I will give them access to my course and you have access to do that as well when you're you know, talking to someone that may actually not be ready for uh, a cash value life insurance policy. After a couple of dis discussions, you're able to send them back my way to maybe get some coaching, to strategize on their debt, increase their cash flow, to be better positioned to fund this type of account because it is, like you said earlier, there's a long-term, lifelong relationship between the agent and the client, but also the, the product itself. There's a long-term commitment there that needs to be fulfilled in order to truly maximize these cash value life insurance policies, right? And so I, I like that with IBC Global, that's one of the things, one of the reasons why I am still committed with the company today and haven't branched off or did my own thing just because of the the vision I think that Steve has to really be that that Amazon in the insurance industry, we just provide all the information, give it all there, give all the facts, all the details, let the client make their decision. Once they're in, once they're in our in our process. Now it's all about, you know, retention, keeping that client, having them bring us more business referrals and just making sure that they're maximizing the account. So I like that the course covers that. Um, Steve does have content on, you know, using the policy, whether it's to pay off debt or make investments or real estate. And, you know, it's a, it's a ton of fun. So in regards to customer service, um, just to kind of recap on that, this is, a long-term relationship that's the standard that you guys have and i want to talk about like because i know this is something that clients come up have said and i even i thought about it a little bit you know let's say um i or you phil we decide to leave the industry right mm -hmm. not because we, we don't like the industry but maybe we retire at some point or we want to just do a totally different um you know venture what happens to your whole book of business in that event? How does IBC Global handle that? If I was to leave or you were to leave or any other agent that maybe it was a new agent, right? And they come on board, you think they're going to be like rock stars and they sell maybe five or 10 policies and then they, they, they quit after six months or a year because maybe they found out it's not the right industry for me. But now there's 10 customers out there that don't have their original agent that they initially spoke with and maybe that can leave a, a sour taste in their mouth that now it's another guy named phil or another guy named denzel that's calling them how do you guys uh mitigate that or if you ever had to go through something like that or have you experienced anything like that can you speak to that sure yeah we've we've had that happen in the past and obviously life happens whether it doesn't work out in the industry or maybe um family issues or situations, right. things happen in life. So you never know what will happen. But overall, the one thing we always want to mention is even if the agent is still there, you get everyone with IBC Global. It's not like you're specifically only working with that agent and that's it. But you always have 
myself, you have Steve as a resource, you have all different departments. Um, and when an agent does leave, they do get assigned to a new agent overall who will now take over uh, with any of your needs, as well as just helping you with review meetings um, and just making sure that everything is going smoothly. So no need to worry. And even in the worst case where something happens to IBC Global, you are working directly with the insurance company, with Guardian, work with Mass Mutual. They'll always be accessible. So you not only have our team, but you also can access the insurance company themselves, which they have great customer service as well. So it's not like you're, you're stuck with the policy and I don't know what to do now. There are many uh, different ways to make sure that everything will be okay. Got it, which is another reason why for those that are watching the viewers, the, the prospects that are considering putting policies in place or you already have a policy in place in regards to let's, let's say worst case scenario, IBC Global gets wiped out, right? We don't see them, they go away, they disappear. And they've got maybe thousands, if not, of uh, policies that they've written and been a part of. All those people aren't necessarily in the wind or lost because IBC Global has all the content that they created. Mm -hmm. they, they taught the client, not just sold them, but they taught them how to use these things. So essentially, we're, we're helping all of the people that put policies in place through IBC Global become self-sufficient, I would, I would call it. And that's how I run my operation as well as a financial coach and consultant is I'm, I'm molding and building up my initial clients that are struggling with their finances or needing to build that discipline. I'm getting them to a point where they don't need me. They don't need to keep paying me to keep learning from me. Right. I, 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 I like to teach in a way where I can transfer everything that I know into their brain. They become self-sufficient and now they're teaching me something, you know. Uh, so that's typically how I like to do it to ensure that, hey, let's just say, God forbid, something happens to me. I pass away that all those people I served are now totally self-sufficient. They're not just left in the wind, like wondering, what do I do now? You know, they're like, no, there's still the content. That'll live on forever on YouTube as well as IBC Global. If anything happened to the company, YouTube channel is still open, right? It'll still be there. Content will still be there unless Steve shut it down and close it. That's a different story. But even, even in then, you got a second channel, my channel, which is still, you know, making the content. So creating all these parameters in place, all these safety uh, uh, procedures to make sure that under no circumstance, no client gets left behind, no one's left in the wind, in the dark. If something happens to your original agent, those that are watching that have policies in place, maybe you worked with Phil, maybe you worked with me, Brandon, Steve, Stephanie, God forbid anything happened to any one of us for any reason, you would get assigned to the next agent at IBC Global and they're gonna be fully equipped as your previous agent, right? we can, you know, we can honestly say that. Um, and then there's the, the course, you never lose access to that. I'm sure Steve will add more material to that. You've got the content. Um, we're just really trying to make it as, as bulletproof as possible. So with that being said, um, as we start to kind of wrap up here, are there any other uh, things that come to mind now that we've been talking for the past 30, 40 minutes, anything that comes to mind that you want to share on, on the back end, any cool things that are, you know, coming up soon or cool projects that IBC Global is working on in terms of big vision, big goals, and also for yourself, any, any big vision, big goals that, that you want for yourself in, in the company or, you know, to give us a little behind the scenes on that as well. Sure. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Like mentioned earlier, we're constantly growing. Uh, we grow from year to year from, 10 employees to 40 within the last couple of years and we expect it to keep happening. Um, but in other aspects where we'll, we'll probably be growing is Steve plans on doing a lot more events, whether it's webinars uh, for clients or for agents, as well as once things clear up a little more um, where COVID really isn't a thought, that's where we might start doing more in-person events and, and just doing more overall for the clients and for people that are interested. Um, the goal for the company really is to keep growing. I mean. I know when we met with Cardone, it really was a goal to uh, try to grow to over 100 employees within the next couple of years. So 
we plan on being very busy to keep going. And uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to be part part of such a, a growing organization. It comes with certain challenges, but we're always working to, to fix. And of course, if there are any clients that have any issues or any ways they think we can improve, you can always reach out to us directly. Not offended by it at all. We can always, there's always room for improvement. Um, and for myself, I, I think as we grow, have more agents, um, I'll, I think I'll always be working with clients overall, but I, I like the aspect of helping other agents, training them. So um, my goal probably would be to get more involved in, in, on that side of things and um, being here as, as long as possible, as long as Steve will have me. And um, like mentioned, it's it's exciting to be part of a, a growing company, but also seeing the amount of passionate people, especially Steve, who um, is very excited about the business and that really rubs off on the rest of the employees. So uh, it's an exciting time to be working with IBC Global. So working at IBC Global, do you consider yourself like you have an entrepreneurial role there? Do you consider yourself uh, an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur? Is this something that you want to be able to copy and do it yourself one day? Or do you want to like stay with the company for your entire career? Is that something you see for yourself? Sure. Yeah. So I think I've learned a lot from Steve and the business overall. Um, you know, I thought about possibly doing something similar, whether through insurance or maybe different businesses. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. But overall, my plan as of right now is to stay as long as I can grow, help this business to grow and continue to work with Steve. Like mentioned, I mean, Steve, not just um, when it comes to helping all the employees, but as a business has done an amazing job. You kind of see how much work it really takes the amount of effort to, to grow this business to where it is. So uh, for myself, that's a big, big, uh, you know, a lot of work overall, where I don't know if that's something for me, but helping this business grow and just being a big part of that is something that I look forward to, I think is exciting. And um, I definitely want to be here as long as possible. Awesome. So I put, you know, big vision goal for IBC Global, they want to grow to 100 plus employees. And Phil's goal, is to you know be with the company as long as possible as long as steve will have you right so you've got a long-term play and i'm in the same boat as well i i want to be with steve long term um, i see this thing blowing up and you also want to uh, continue to build that role of helping agents you know succeed as well so helping other agents not only learn the concept but be able to present it effectively communicate the message so we can help a bigger you know, audience out there because the reality, um, I don't have the exact numbers or statistics, maybe you do, but I know there is an, there is a overwhelming amount of uninsured Americans. There's a huge gap of the amount of uninsured people compared to licensed insurance agents. Like I think there was actually a decline in the amount of, um, licensed insurance agents per year over the last few years or so I don't think it's been an increase or if anything it's been kind of stagnant where if you were compared to the real estate world if I'm not mistaken there's like a you know there's over I think it's 1.5 million or so homes that are built per year but there's more real estate agents compared to the amount of properties that are actually available being sold per year if I, if, if I made sense there versus insurance agents there's not enough insurance agents for the demand that's out there for clients getting insured. I think that's an insane opportunity. So if you're an insurance agent listening and watching, you know, timing opportunities, very, very key in the marketplace. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And going along those lines, I think that's a stat that was pretty staggering was only 8% of policies. And this, I think was a couple of years ago, but only 8% of policies for whole life insurance that are written are um, focused on cash value. You have more traditional life insurance policies where if you just go down the road to your local agent, they pretty much ask how much death benefit do you want on a policy for yourself? They tell you how much the premium is. And that's really the end of it. You pay the premium, you see cash value, maybe start to accumulate starting year three, breaking even 15 years down the line, it's not efficient. And that's where a lot of people get a sour taste in the mouth about whole life insurance overall. It's where other agents maybe don't have the education or don't really know how to properly design things. So um, definitely a huge opportunity to be able to help a lot of people, really help them in, in different ways. And um, yeah, I, I think 
what Steve has with the ILS training is a great resource for so many different people out there. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, I want to really thank you for doing this with me. I think this is very unique. There's not a whole lot of content out there that takes deep dives into insurance agencies, the company, their process, customer service, the team. And, you know, I want to get ahead of it and, and create a little trend to continue to provide that transparency, open and honest discussions. I know that's part of IBC Global's mission statement is providing transparency in the marketplace so that the, the customer wins, the viewer wins when they get to see it all and then make their decision and they don't feel like anything was left out, right? So I wanna thank you in advance for, for doing this with me. And for those that are watching, you can reach out to Phil personally, you can request him uh, uh, to design your policy. If that's, if you know, after listening to Phil, if you really like him and, um, and you're at that point where you're ready to put a policy in place, when you go to ibcglobal.com, you click the link below where it says ready to start your cash value life insurance asset. That'll take you to my website. That'll automatically, you know, tag me and I can be a, an additional added resource as well. Like I said, anyone that has a policy has put a policy in place and used me as, as a referral, use my name. You also have access to me to a, to a certain degree. And I'm actually working with IBC Global to have like some kind of a monthly uh, meetup with everyone that has policies in place to just discuss ideas. Like do you want to use the policy for real estate. Do you want to use it for crypto? Do you want to use it to fund your other asset accounts uh, to pay off debt? Just to have conversations to see what people are doing. You know, I, I know people are using infinite banking for mobile homes and RVs and even um, collectible or commodity type of assets, unique assets, rare assets. So very, very interesting stuff overall. And um, I'm young in the industry, so I'm continuing to learn and get better. So with that being said, thank you, Phil, for being here. Um, anything you'd like to say to my audience before we close out? Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate I appreciate you having me on, on your channel. Uh, we are always looking to help people out with have uh, people reach out to IBC Global. Even if it doesn't make sense in your situation, we just want to make sure to get as much information in your hands, be as transparent as possible and do what's best for your situation personally. But feel free to reach out uh, through our site, ibcglobal.com or directly to myself, uh, to Denzel, we should be able to help you out. Awesome. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful day and we'll be talking soon. Take care.